Hey guys, Garrett here, and today I wanted to give you an update on my series of how I mortgaged my house to buy stocks and then have those stocks pay for that mortgage. It's been about five months since I made the last update video, so a lot to happen at this point. If you're wondering why I did this, two years ago, almost exactly, the bottom was falling out in the stock market and it was during COVID. So I'm the type of guy that wants to buy when people are panic selling and I needed cash. And so the easiest way that I could do that was take out a mortgage in my house. The house was paid off, so there was no mortgage on it. So all I had to do was go to the bank, refinance. I ended up pulling out $200,000. Uh, the valuation came in at 600,000. So it was roughly one third of its value. I pulled that out with a 30 year mortgage which was the fixed rate of 3.125%. So very cheap money to get. And then I started investing and I did it little by little by little. In hindsight, I should have done it all right then and there. And I would have had huge gains going forward. But, you know, it is what it is. So I have been investing and investing and investing. And over time, I'm able to get more and more in. Therefore, spinning off dividends that hopefully make my mortgage payment. At the end of this, I'm hoping that the whole thing is worth more than zero dollars. As long as it's worth something, this wasn't for nothing. Hopefully it's worth at least the 200,000 that we're taking out for this. So again, the whole goal here is to have the dividends, the interest, everything that's spent off of it, pay for the principal and interest on that mortgage. Here are all of the stocks that I have so far. It's a combination of regular common stocks, preferred stocks, as well as baby bonds. So this shows the stock itself, the symbol, the quantity, how many I have, the cost per share, that's my cost basis, the total cost, of course that'd be the quantity times the cost per share, and then the dividend per share, and that's annually, and then the dividend percentage, that's an annual dividend percentage, and then again, the annual dividend in dollars. So up to this point, I have $129,005.41 invested within the stock market itself. That spins off $10,164.77 worth of dividends. Luckily, since the last time that I did my update video, quite a few of these companies have increased the dividend for their common shares. So I updated the whole spreadsheet, which did increase the amount of dividends that this was spinning off. On top of everything that is invested within the market, I also had $25,000 that was put into a uh, one year 8% note within ground floor. And if you wanna know what a ground floor is, there's a link down in my description which uh, will take you to ground floor and it also will give you a, a bonus if you decide to sign up and invest. But that $25,000 note at 8% spins off $2,000 per year. So we get to add that to my annual dividends. So we have a mortgage of $200,000 but of course mortgages aren't free. So actual mortgage proceeds was $197,460. The total invested so far, the ground floor plus all of the stocks, is $154,005.41. And that represents 78% of the total that I could have put into the market. So that would have been those actual mortgage proceeds. Uh, the annual dividend that this is doing so far is $12,164.77. A reminder that my mortgage is $856.75 per month. So at this point, the monthly dividend is $1,013.73. So I am exceeding what the mortgage payment is. So I'm at 118.3% of that mortgage payment, which means that I get to make that payment plus reinvest whatever's left over. Now, if we dive a little bit deeper, if you take that 197,460 minus the total invested so far, which is 154,000, it comes out to $43,455. That's what I should have left to invest. But you have to remember, I've been doing this for almost two years now and I've had to make mortgage payments. So I don't actually have that much in cash left over. I actually have $37,789.90. So there's about a $6,000 gap there or reduction in funds over that time. The good news is I have been paying on that loan. So it was 200,000. At this point, it is 192,758.96. So a little over $7,000 worth of equity back into it at this point. 
the overall value of the stocks, the ground floor, plus the cash that I still have is $207,695.72. So thankfully, if I liquidated everything right now, I would end up ahead. But you and I know that the market can change at any point and things are going crazy right now with inflation and the world and all of that kind of stuff. So who knows what's going to happen? I'm not going to speculate anything. I'm just trying to match yields to pay for this whole thing. So I'm not too terribly concerned with the overall value as it goes on, as long as it's making my mortgage payment. And as I mentioned before, at this point, that monthly dividend is more than my mortgage payment. So as you notice, the cash cash amount that I actually have left is less than what I could have had. So 37,000 versus 43,000. But since I'm making more monthly, I'll be able to add more back into this whole thing. So I'll be able to reinvest it. And eventually, because there is extra money coming in beyond that mortgage payment, I will have probably more than 200,000 invested in this. I'm just gonna keep reinvesting all of it as I go. And that's the beauty of this, is not only do some of what I have adjust their dividends over time, whether that is up or down, but historically it has been up over time. And of course, this is a 30 year experiment and I still have 28 years to go. So over time, it's gonna be really fun just to see how far this goes, how high I can get that monthly dividend to be, and just see where it all ends up. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure to hit that like button down below as well as subscribe. I'll see you next time.